Uh, members will be aware that um, the renewal period for driver licence may be up to three years. However, as an authority, we do renew licences on an annual basis. So the recommendation um, in the Department for Transfer of Best Practice when it refers to each renewal could in fact indicate a three-year medical. There's various other publications which are cited in the report relating to uh, best practice on medicals, and, uh, one of which is the medical that is required for those drivers of HGV vehicles um, and public carriage vehicles and the position with those type of vehicles is that they have licenses which have to be renewed from when an individual reaches the age of 45 and thereafter that license has to be renewed every five years until the age of 65 when it is renewable on an annual basis. Um, there is a requirement when each of these licenses are due for renewal that that individual must undergo a medical. And there are specific standards attached to the medical that is undertaken um, by drivers of those particular vehicles. That is just some background which members will be aware of um, because at the last meeting um, in November, uh, so the previous meeting in November, members approved consultation. Um, to be circulated uh, on the current medical requirements and proposed changes to that requirement. That consultation took place um, and the methods of that consultation are listed in the report and the consultation document is attached in appendix 2. The consultation um, brought 209 responses and a summary of those responses are attached in appendix 3 and also the comments received through the responses are attached to the report in Appendix 4. The majority of respondents, that is 69%, stated that more regular checks should be undertaken by private hire and hacking carriage drivers. And the most popular option selected by those respondents wanting a change in the current requirement is for medical checks to be undertaken on the initial application and thereafter every three years, with checks being undertaken annually from the age of 65. There's some background in the report in relation to a case um, that we were involved in as a council where the current policy was challenged in respect of the, uh, an annual check after 65, as it was alleged that it was discriminatory in, in terms of age. Um, the district judge considering that uh, case and determined that the council were, uh, it was appropriate for the council to have medicals on an annual basis after 65 because there was a legitimate reason for doing so. It is recognised that while certain health conditions may increase uh, with age, um, the health and well-being of an individual can be affected at any time and by many factors. Uh, an individual is employed and becomes ill will be likely to report their illness to the employer who will then be in a position to require that individual to undergo a medical to assess their fitness for undertaking that particular role for which they are employed. As members are aware, hacking carriage and private hire drivers are self-employed and therefore there is no built-in checking system um, in terms of the medical condition of a licensed driver. Uh, and members are asked to consider this factor when determining the frequency of medical checks. Um, just for example, a, a, an employee of the council, if they were off sick, they would undergo a return to work, interview with their line manager when they return to work, and if it was considered appropriate, they may be referred to occupational health, and depends upon the reason why they were ill, and maybe uh, the time that they were ill. So information would be coming forth to the employer as to the medical condition of that individual. Um, that is not the case obviously for private hire and, and hacking carriage drivers. Um, representatives of the Happy Carriage and Private Hire Joint Consultancy Committee have been consulted um, at um, a number of meetings, um, including <coughs> a recent meeting um, on Monday in which I can report that um, there was support given to the 
recommendations given in the report. Uh, Derek Cummins uh, is here um, and he did indicate at the meeting that he was mandated to make representations regarding um, the recommendations and obviously is here this evening uh, in respect of that. Um, members are asked to consider the responses to the consultation and um, review the policy and it is recommended that the uh, members um, adopt a medical requirement uh, that is undertaken by, a gen by the general practitioner in which the um, individual driver is when reported or it is um, when you are listed oh, so when, when, you, when you are that medical, no, 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 when you no, no, no. registered and you are sorry I've spoken for too long so yeah with that GP with whom they are registered that that's the person who should take undertake the medical uh, members are asked to confirm that the standards applied to the medical examination required to be undertaken by private hire and hand carriage drivers are the group two medical standards applied by uh, the DVLA and that the medical form attached to appendix five is adopted to be used by doctors undertaking the medical. And the members set the implementation of the policy for, for, with it to be effective from the 1st of August, requiring each driver to present a satisfactory medical certificate for their first renewal from this date. Um, and thereafter every three years until they reach 65 when it would be on an annual basis. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Now, would you like to <coughs> comment from Derek before we debate it? Okay, Derek. Um, Derek, does anyone know Derek, by the way? Yeah. Of course, Mr. Zafir. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of new members I can mention. Yeah. Derek, come to you back in the evening. Firstly, I was going to, but just to sort of clarify what my Margaret said is that when she said that taxis and private hire um, don't have any checks that they do is that if you have if you go to your doctor and you have a condition which affects your driving that becomes a no survival condition and the DVL is DVLA is no survival and obviously the DVLA is then no survival the overall obviously and we've had plenty of drivers one of them's had a blackout one of them's uh, problems with his heart and it's a good year, and one had cancer as well, and they were immediately notified. And obviously, their badges were immediately uh, notified. Uh, not, not to interrupt you, you're not coming. Oh, yeah, oh, so, no, 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 no. Sorry, do you want to say that again? You heard that? Yeah, yeah. say it again, you yeah. know. Okay, I'll just say this again, yeah. Um, Margaret said that there's no checks, with the fact that there is lots of checks of the, if you go to a physician with, uh, a, doctor, uh, with a problem, and it's found out that it would diversely affect his driver and their professional drivers. That becomes notifiable. The doctor then goes to the DVLA and says this person has a notifiable illness. The DVLA will then remove your badge, remove your license, which then can be your badge. <coughs> and that's happened plenty of times in the, um, what's it, um, what's it, what's it, the cab driver. Firstly, I'm sorry, could I just address that point just to yeah. assist? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, just to assist on that point, um, the, it is reported that any system that relies on self-declaration is likely to suffer from a degree of under-reporting, particularly where declaration can result in the loss of a driving licence. Um, there are reports uh, from the DVLA um, which show that um, the actual reporting from doctors is particularly low in terms of um, notifiable um, conditions to the DPLA, um, whereby, for example, um, others that were reported, um, this is, th these are statistics that they, they, they are historic statistics, but usually they, they would follow the same pattern. Um, when you talk about, talk about others, often colleagues or family members, the number of people reporting um, factors that could affect somebody's driving was just under 12,000. <coughs> that corresponds to doctors reporting incidents of 2,280 um, drivers themselves um, would actually also uh, report things. Um, but certainly um, there's an increase from, for example, police 
they report more on doctor does and uh, usually following an accident or an incident. Um, so it was just to uh, okay. give some figures to that. Well, and then I'd like you to do the opportunities. So if somebody had a heart attack or a stroke or cancer, they don't be caught in the back of the chest. This is just a... Do uh, uh, you know, okay, right. I just like to uh, just to, in our way of passing, mention the age of this policy because this is a similar type of of policy initiative by the licensing, in that it loads considerable costs onto the running of a business, and there's no not a single word about the costing of it. Is it affordable or not? Now, I have no problem with policy changes. Obviously, if a policy isn't fit for purpose, or it's out of its usefulness, or it's found to be flawed, we'll change it. But there's not a single scrap of evidence, not a shred of evidence, that the policy that's been pursued has had any detrimental effect to the travelling public of will. Not a scrap of evidence. Now, on page 9, they give an example of what is good to, which is a national license. I'm indebted to uh, Ms. O'Donnell to tell me it's not a medical, it's a license. And the first thing I'll say to about that, it's national. Now, if the government wants to impose that on cab drivers, they'll let the government do that. That's, the, that's what they're there for. But they've actually left it to the local authorities, which is an, which is an interesting thing. Why didn't they? In, in fact, there's a bill going through Parliament at the moment about to get through the centre, which is the deregulation bill. And we've had plenty of, we haven't had any input in it, but we've had lots of conversations with politicians of all hues and positions. And they are under no circumstance that they want to see a freeing up of red tape and bureaucracy and this let's put costs onto business for the sake of it. Let's have some justification. If it needs to be done, we'll do it. But this, oh, we'll do that because it's been it's been enforced for 20 years, is simply not any longer considered the right way to go about business or to increase business costs. Now, I've also noticed is that the there seems to be a recommendation for three years. Now, now the uh, that's more stringent than. Group two, and it's more stringent than every other local authority, which you're going for five years. And it just seems to me that somebody's saying, I want 200 pounds off you. Why? Why not? I want 500 pounds off you. Why? Why not? There's no justification whatsoever. Now, this old one mentions best practice, which is, which is this one here, three parts. And they never mention this. When we talk about best practice, now. this is the role of licensing and policy justification by best practice. Obviously, I won't read it all, but it goes up for that. The aim of local authority licensing of taxi and private hire trucks is to protect the public, which is uh, as well. But uh, without wishing to alienate anybody here, it's not here to have anybody to exercise their high laws or be in the bonnet. Or, but they also go on to say, Licensing requirements which are unduly stringent will tend, tend to unreasonably restrict the supply of taxi and private hire services by putting up the cost of operation or otherwise restricting entry into the trade. Local licensing authorities should recognise that too restrictive an approach can work against the public interest and can indeed have safety implications. And once again, we've had the 10 year limit on a bus, which is caused, which means a huge cost. And now there's more costs being added to it. And really, we should take notice of Cheshire West and Chester, which, we, which I unfortunately deal with as well. I shouldn't say one further to one. And they wanted this flagship policy for taxi and private hires. And a year down the line, they've lost 5% of drivers, 50% of new applicants, uh, the down line. And the private hire, I think, are moving lock, stock, and barrel to D side. Where the, where the licensing conditions are less strain, uh, less prohibitive, and of course still do it, still work in Chester, it's in Chester. So if it's flagship, it's a, 
But anyway, the final point I want to make about public safety, and it's not mentioned in the report at all, is national screening. I mean, whichever sort of, I know you're about to decide uh, um, whichever one's been born, you, you, you bring out five years, seven years, five years, eight years, ten years, or whatever. I can better that because I had four medicals last year and the one before that, and it's called National Speed Screener. I'm sure practically everybody around here is doing it. Here, Mr. Cummins, in our practice, we provide an ongoing service for our patients according to our records. Dear Mr. Cummins, I'm, I'm, I'm a minute and a half, I've got two of them. <coughs> kidney, uh, sugar, blood pressure, the whole lot. I mean, how safe do you want the public to be? Um, I'd just like to finish off with the old cliche, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if, it, if it's broke, it'll show me some justification. So I can go to the train and say, look, I'm sorry guys that this is an extra expense you're running cost. But I was made aware of the Hughes case, of the Jones situation, of absolutely nothing. We're doing this because we're doing this. And while it's in my head, uh, if, if, if you may just give me a, a bit more time, there was an incident up in Glasgow at Christmas where a lorry driver collapsed at the wheels and killed several people. Now, he was subject to medicals, and there's not a physician in the world that will tell you that you can have a medical up for five years, three years, two years, that will stop that. Absolutely not. Um, I would just urge you to reject this, which is just pointless bureaucracy, more red tape, more, more expense at the trade, and all we're doing is handing over two, three hundred pound, uh, and putting it in the doctor's pocket instead of hard work cab drivers at a time when there's when the when the trade itself is on its knees. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now, Madam Brother, who's coming here to our members, right, in the box. Yeah, thanks, Dave. I, I just want to clear in my own mind that um, Derek, as the, as the hack and carriage um, driver, um, what which are the options, because there's a range of options, um, that he saying that he uh, recommends, because I heard one thing basically is they probably didn't fix it, and then the other thing is that I'll be in line with the five year checks uh, that wasn't making. So I'm, I just want to be very clear about what your representation is, David. Yeah, I'm mandated to keep the letters. Yeah, to keep the letters. Because not, no problems have been flagged up. There's not a problem been flagged up. However, I did in passing say is that. It would appear that the other authorities are mirroring the Group 2 medical intervals, and we appear to want to be even more stringent than that, even though there's no justification for, for, for the change, which seems to be a bit odd. But as I said, just to make it clear, I am mandated for the change. Okay. certain age and how frequency it is from 45. Mm -hmm. um, 
it is, as I said in the report, recognised that while certain health conditions do increase with age, um, there can be other conditions that um, can develop at any age. So um, it was really to highlight to members to, to move away from uh, medical checks that are actually linked to a person's age directly, other than when they reach the age of 65. Um, we have had incidents of um, taxi drivers who attend the licensing panel um, and it is only at the licensing panel that we get to hear that they may be under certain medication. Um, it may only be when they turn up to have a license reviewed that a conversation takes place that we learn that they may be taking medication that could affect their ability to drive. Um, therefore, it is looked at as that obviously the, the only way it would be <coughs> one would accept that you know if you took a medical on somebody every single day, something could still happen. But it's really looking to see what would be a good practice to adopt to ensure that um, there are drivers who are in good health to actually transport members of the public. Um, we have had, as I say, many discussions with members of the trade through uh, the JCC who particularly support a change in the requirement, not only as a measure to protect members of the public, but they see it as a real positive step towards improving the health of licensed drivers. They all recognise, and there's no dispute about this, that uh, taxi uh, and private hire drivers have a higher propensity for certain health conditions because they are in a sedentary occupation. And also, um, uh, I do have uh, some things here in terms of the where taxi drivers and private hire drivers live. They are uh, predominantly in areas where ill health and the, the health and um, life uh, span is lower than in other areas of, of rural. There is a dominance there. And, and as I said, it, it would in fact support um, the council's priority onto public health as well to improve generally the health of people in, in rural. And certainly discussions that took place on Monday um, were saying that it would encourage people, knowing that they had to go for medical, to actually keep up their health um, uh, to, to that extent. So, I say the, the, um, the three year, it would, as Derek has indicated, um, if the government's deregulation bill if it does go through, it would tie in with the fact that the licence um, would be renewed on a three year basis. They obviously see that as a relevant period of time to check on a driver and therefore that would correspond with if you go to check on your driver every three years then one of the things that you will be checking as well as their criminal records would be their medical fitness to be a driver. Likewise the DBLA licence for the other vehicles are issued on a five year basis after 45. If the deregulation bill comes in then licences for private hire and happy will be issued on a three year basis so it would tie in with, with the renewal uh, in that case. It is like it, I mean, the indication said was spring 2015 and the indication is before the general election. Obviously if it doesn't come before the general election it, it won't happen but um, we are watching this space very carefully. It should happen in the next few weeks if it's going to happen. Um, Derek's indicated, but I'll bring you in a minute and we'll be happy here, okay? Because that's what it's disturbing, wasn't it? Yeah. Do you want to say one from Derek goes with one from Derek? Yeah, it's a problem. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it does vary and one would have to work in terms of the establishing those costs and all that kind of risk. Yes, I'm telephoned a number of medical practices. Uh, and the costs vary between £60 and £164.50. Um, and a, a number of the practices advise that they will only um, do medical examinations for their own patients. Um, but the, the, the proposal is that the recommendation is that they go to their own GP. Um, one practice charges less for their own patients than they will do for someone who's not their patients. So, 
Have we had any difficulties with what we've, what we've had at, at present? No. So don't build the castle. That, I mean, that's all I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I think obviously we've got to be our purposes to look after the safety of the public. Mm -hmm. But we also need to be mindful of not putting unnecessary burdens on the, on the trade at the same time. Um, Derek, in his earlier um, remarks, made mention of um, flagship policy at Cheshire West and Chester and driving, was it private hire across the border to the side? And so where would we stand on, on this? I mean, do you have to be well plated or can you be plated from somewhere else? And, and are we in danger of um, doing ourselves down in terms of the amount of um, offer to the public in Will? Yes, to assist her, um, in order to operate a uh, private hire uh, within any uh, district council of the council, then all three licences have to be issued by that same authority. So for a private hire vehicle to operate in, um, in, in this area, um, and take bookings from this area, then the operator, the vehicle and the driver all have to have their licence issued from here. Um, there are obviously circumstances, that doesn't mean to say that the vehicle can't go across and you know, if you book a, a private hire vehicle and you want to go to Liverpool, then obviously the, the vehicle can go to Liverpool. Um, there is an increasing in, in other parts of the country where hackney carriage vehicles are attached to um, private hire operators um, and the distinction is slightly different there um, and that, that there is being cross-border operation of happy drivers that are attached to a private hire operator. Um, that's not happening here um, uh, to that extent at all. We, we, we do have obviously happenings that are attached to um, private hire operators, um, but we don't get others really coming in and, and, and using it as they may do it in, in other areas of the country. Thank you. Yeah, just a quick one, really, Chair. We have some recent legislation enacted whereby people who are taking medicinal drugs like morphine or some of the other things, legitimacy, are now being likely to be prosecuted if they're seen to be driving vehicles without uh, authority, if you like, and without having justification. I'm wondering whether this has been brought in partly in response to the fact that our most bus drivers on the road now aren't drunk, but they're suffering from drugs, either legitimate drugs or from drugs that are misuse of drugs. I'm wondering if there's any connection here with why this has been brought in, because I can understand that being a reason for having it at a more frequent interval than five years, it's people can suddenly become drug addicts at various reasons at various times. That's not to say that they are, but just another issue that might involve um, this, in this situation. I'm wondering if there's any, any sort of uh, reason for that to initiate this in, uh, reduction in the testing time. It's not been a direct consideration. Um, however, there's a, a number of factors, as you say, that um, have been happening you know, over time. Um, whereby people do get concerned about the, the, the drivers themselves and, and the health. And these responses have been made a few times in the response. It uh, concerns me as much as people being genuinely ill from something that abuse of drugs or abuse of alcohol or whatever, yeah. and then being expected to, uh, to just carry on with their life. I mean, this is where it, it is, as Derek says, as far as I'm correct, checks and balances uh, in, in place. and. Yeah. It's really trying to see what is a reasonable um, interval between those, those times. Um, there is no one right answer, um, and different people have different standards and, and different views on that. I say the consideration has been um, in terms of the fact that licences may go to three years, and the indication is that that will happen. Um, also, the fact that through the consultation, that was the strongest that came through um, as being a reasonable interval for um, medical checks to be undertaken. Um, in response to Derek's asking for specific incidents, um, it happens different times. I mean, I can give you an example of today uh, that uh, I mean, it was reported to me that a driver was interviewed regarding an incident and at the end said, this has caused me a lot of anxiety, this particular incident had a heart attack last year and I'm on medication and have been ever since and we didn't <coughs> know about that until we were speaking to him this week um, about the fact that somebody complained about him. Um, so, you know, they are, that's 
we can only at this current time rely on incidents where members of the public are prepared to actually take that trouble and make that effort to complain, or indeed something else comes to light, and that individual is referred to the licensing panel. Just a very quick supplementary yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Very yeah. in mind, yeah. Are we jumping the gun by actually imposing it ourselves at this stage, or do you think it's better for us to wait until it's imposed nationally on everybody? The, the actual medical requirement won't be imposed on everybody. It's purely the interval in which you, you have to license the driver. Um, the, we, we did, um, I mean, the actual, we attempted to look at the medical and review the medical sort of over the last two to three years. Um, I think it's probably about two years ago now that we first did consultation and unfortunately we've got six responses to that consultation um, and we're also pending the, the, the case in terms of age discrimination and um, as I say I, I can tell you and I know Derek won't disagree with this that the, the trade in representatives um, have supported the change in the medical requirement I mean, it might be helpful if Derek could advise us when he says he's mandated, you know, how many um, members have mandated him to represent them today. Yeah, well, uh, uh, perhaps you might have the opportunity to say, but if you really if you actually want to um, get in touch with the head office, I'm sure we will also help you there as well. Um, the remit of, of this committee is to make sure that we do everything we possibly can to safeguard the general public. And I'd just like to pick up on something that, that David said. There's a huge problem. Dave, David used the term legitimate drugs. What he was talking about is prescription drugs. And there is, there's no doubt and this is statistically, this isn't anecdotal. There's a, a much bigger problem in this country with prescription drugs. People becoming addicts with prescription drugs, as opposed to alcoholism and illegal drugs, what we call illegal drugs. And if there's any way that we can further safeguard the general public by checking up on taxi drivers, with the prescription drugs that they use, as well as signs for alcoholism and, and things that, that are in the I would certainly um, recommend. Thanks, Chair. John okay. Thompson. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks, Chair. I'd support what Mark said before about, I hope it's a time to about taxi drivers in front of us mm -hmm. and the licensing panel. Talk about being ill, and we ask them why, and they tell us that they've got heart attacks, they've got stress, they've got this and that, and that. And we've got to say to them, well, What drug are you taking? And drugs, yes. Um, I've been on drugs for a long, long time. And we sit here and go, What are you driving the vehicle for, man? You, why would you come and tell us we've got this problem? So, what do we do? Leave it and say to everyone, Oh, we've left it. And then, you know, God forbid something happens like happened up in Glasgow. And um, he said, Well, you know, we've had people who took take a proper medical and 24 hours to drop dead. That's not the point. If we try and stop it now and show that we're trying to slow it down or get ask them to please, you know, you've got a problem, come and see us. We've got them in, in where the taxi drivers say to them, Why don't we walk down the speed and ticket? Oh, they don't have to. So if you can't rely on just to report on a speeding ticket for a problem with licensing, what will chance you've got with a medical? Very, very little. And for them to set the ten hours that the doctors will do it, the doctors don't do it because I, I know someone, not a taxi driver, but it's got sleep apnea and he's driving a vehicle. I mean, that's bad enough when some, someone's driving on a long and they drop down sleep. We've got to hear in front of us about some a taxi driver falling asleep. Yeah. Here, yeah. this is not. We didn't write this. Mm. This is from the taxi drivers. Mm. And from the uh, can you, we, we've got a 
a strict dress code. We've got all kinds of things here. But a lot of it is to do with being healthy. And no, I know what he's saying, but you couldn't get this after tax dollars to roll down the other way here. Don't fall out. I speak, I couldn't do it now. So, you know, you know to send our kids from the wrong fit and the wrong health in, they're not. Ben, and so I'd, I'd like to, if you can go further, I'd like to see Amanda do drug tests. Because it's getting worse, it's not getting better. And I've seen, okay, it's anecdotal, you might say it's anecdotal, but it isn't. Well, I am a taxi driver, has been taking drugs and caught taking drugs, and we had them before us. So it's not anecdotal, it's a fact. And it was caught by the police taking it. Okay. Um, I've, I've served on many panels and been uh, concerned about certain individuals who have come before us. And um, in cases like that, we've usually asked about uh, their yeah. medical condition. Um, we have got a duty to protect members of the public, and we have to minimise risk as much as possible. We've got a duty to do that. Um, I can understand about any person being concerned about any extra costs that they um, may incur through this. But unfortunately, if you do certain jobs, um, it's important that you are the fittest that you possibly can be. And, it, and it, it's recorded. You know, so as I say, we've got a duty as members of the licensing in the licensing panel to ensure the well-being of the public and I believe that we're moving in the right direction that we have to have these regular medical checks to ensure that we are we take all the different factors into account and we believe that person to be a responsible fit and healthy driver so I, I would go on with the recommendation I was just saying, the comments are really very interesting to me. Yeah. And very much, and they mirror a lot of what we have said in the panels. So, yeah. so you can take you then moving on to the box. Yeah, so I mean, I couldn't agree more with what Matt said, and then with the issue of the protection of the public. But the flip side of the coin is, if drivers are getting more medical checks more regularly, it's actually protecting their health as well, because yes. we're actually looking after that as well. <coughs> Therefore, we need to check that we actually agree to um, have a medical on applications and then every three years up to the age of 65 and then have a second visit.
So if they were due to have those checks done at that time, then we would ask them to have those done. But if they were not, that they would just come in sequence with their other license that they had with us. And therefore, in order to tie both of the licenses up, that the two licenses then run concurrently. Did he, did he say he was okay with being filmed, but we're, we're going to be excluded anyway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine, but they've got to agree the exclusion first. I, 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 can't, I can't hear from what they would be. Someone, someone. I'm sorry. Can I, can I assist? <laughs> Firstly, um, I think Derek has been very clear that the application is not being filmed. Yeah. Um, so I think that is important. Disclosing personal information but to go has been very internet. well end up on the internet yeah. and on YouTube. So we'd rather, we'd rather have the hand. No. We, we're yeah. trying to yeah. protect your own rights. I see. So it's a thing called 7 8, so we're excluded. everyone's excluded except me. So would you be happier to if I just said no filming? Please. Yes. Please. Yes, Chair. Yes. Doesn't matter if there's no filming, does it? No filming. If, if they're excluding the public, then it doesn't matter. No, no. It's not. It's not an exam title, they basically state that they don't film. Okay, you're okay with that, you don't... I'm getting confused now. <laughs> are you, sorry, are you excluding members of the public or not? No, 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 no,
I'll make it quite clear. If the, if, if the gentleman wants to be filled, you know what I'm Okay. 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 Uh, well, at the standards committee, it said if you're going to make a decision that filming's not allowed, then you record that in a minute with the reason. So, okay, that uh, could you give? Not the standards committee. I, I know, but I'm just. But you must realise that at certain times, individuals have private, personal, and financial, and they do want not not their business. Spread on Twitter. I'd just say I, I'd like that recorded in minutes, and if that's the case, then I'll stop filming because I want to challenge that anyway under the regulations. So that's yeah. my position. Yeah.